Hey guys, what's up and welcome to my channel. My name's Chris. Today we are at the University of Nebraska. We're gonna use the Rockwell hardness tester and we're gonna test out a bunch of different wrenches. So let's head on down to the College of Engineering for Mechanical and Material Sciences set up calibrate the Rockwell hardness tester and get to testing some tools. Let's get to it. Today we will be testing two ASME B107.1 standards. On the low side of calibration we will be trying to hit 31.1 and it looks like we ended up at 30.1 and on the high side, we'll be trying to hit 61.8 and we hit 61.5. So we are one HRC plus or minus when it comes to calibration. Now the first wrench we're gonna be testing is a Stanley Chrome Vanadium. This was picked up at Walmart and we should hope that it falls in our ASME range. We will be doing three sample readings for every wrench. Now we won't show you on all the wrenches, We'll just kind of highlight what some of the readings are. And here you can see that the Stanley wrench was really, really consistent. Now here you have the channel lock wrench and this one, it looks really, really close to what we're gonna show you next. The readings on the channel lock wrench come in at 46.9. Now that's a good reading to remember because again, the next wrench that we look at is really, really close. Castings, markings on the icon wrench here really, really mirror exactly what you see on that channel lock one. Now looks aren't everything, but when you test the metal out on here, that's gonna pierce right through the chrome and it's gonna give us a reading of 46.6. So the metal hardness on the icon is really, really close to that channel lock one. So you all should be pretty familiar with Husky Tools. This is a Home Depot brand. Now Home Depot right now is currently using Apex Tools for a lot of their wrenches as well as their sockets. And you can see that this one is really, really consistent coming in at 46.7 as well as 46.7 again. So really consistent on that one. Now here you can see you have a Ghidorah wrench and this one is actually made in India. So well, we're gonna have a lot of wrenches here, their country of origin is very varying when it comes to looking at them. Here you can see you have a Mac Expert. This one, when you take away all the grips and nubs on it, it really looks like that Stanley wrench and it tests out fairly well. Now here you have an older brand. This is an Evercraft. They don't make them quite like this. It looks like an older Craftsman USA wrench. This one's testing in pretty hard, right in the middle of things at 44.1. Here we have a Challenger by Proto. This is an older made in the USA wrench and this one is testing out really, really soft. Could it be a fluke? So sure it could, but manufacturing many years ago is different than what it is today. Here you have a Craftsman USA. This one was purchased at Sears a long, long time ago, and it's coming in at 42 on the HRC scale. Here you have an SK. Don't mix this one up with SK Tools. This is an SK Electrolyte, which was actually made back in the late 50s and early 60s before it was fully bought out by SK Tools. It tested out really low. It's a really small wrench. I did contact the manufacturer and they weren't able to give me any specifics on it other than older tools. Manufacturing processes were completely different. And if I had an issue, they'd warranty that out for me, no problem. Now here we have a Blackhawk. Now this was another company that was purchased by Stanley Black & Decker over the years. And this one tested out really, really well First reading there, 49.1, 50.5, as well as 50.4. So that one really is a good bang for your buck and a pretty strong wrench. Here we have a gear wrench. This is a 6.1, not that it matters, but I have it, I use it every now and then. 46.3 on that, which really mirrors close to what that Husky Tools one, because they're again both made by Apex Tools. Now the Crescent brand here, it's made by Apex Tools as well. So let's test out this one and see if it's pretty consistent like the others. 46.1, so not too bad, pretty darn consistent. The wrench that we have up next is the Cobalt from Lowe's 10 millimeter. 
And one common theme I'm seeing on some of these smaller size wrenches, they're testing out really darn low. So this one here you can see is a 37.2 on the Rockwell hardness scale, and ASME spec means it should be 38 and above. So interesting to see on those. Now here we have a Harbor Freight. This is the Flex ratcheting wrench. So we threw one of those in there, and this one tested out pretty well at 45 on the Rockwell C scale. Not too bad for a Pittsburgh Pro, those are pretty cheap. Here we have a brand that you probably wouldn't normally see. This is a Master Mechanic. Now the one thing that I've learned, and I'll share with you at the end, this one's testing out really, really hard. So some of these older brands, if you can pick these up at an estate auction, that's a really, really good deal. That wrench is gonna last a long time. Here's a pretty interesting one. This is a Mercedes-Benz by Heiko Tools. And this one, again, it's a really, really small size when it comes to the open end on it. And again, this one's testing out really low at 36.5 on the Rockwell C scale. Pretty common theme that I'm seeing on the smaller sizes. Here we have a Duralast. This is something that you could pick up at AutoZone. And this one, to my surprise, was testing out really well and right in the middle on that Rockwell hardness scale that you would want to see. Now, I thought it was only fair to follow up the Duralast with a Great Neck. So that Duralast product was actually made by Great Neck. And AutoZone switched suppliers here in the last year and they moved over to Apex Tools. So those test out fairly consistent when you look at those because again, they came from the same manufacturer. The next wrench we have here is a KD Tools. Now this was a USA made wrench. It was from the early 2000s. And you can see this one's testing out really fairly well on the high side of the average at 46.9. So not a bad wrench. Now here we have a Herbrand wrench. Now this is an older wrench. You can't just pick this one up anywhere. This would be something that you would pick up at an estate sale or maybe have carried through your family. This one was definitely one of my dad's wrenches and I wish I had the entire set. Here we have a standard Harbor Freight combination wrench. Now this is a value priced wrench, so it's really interesting and kind of neat to see. It's pretty consistent with the Flex version coming in at 43.3 on the Rockwell hardness scale. The final wrench that we tested here is a Forged in the USA, pretty much no name brand, and it doesn't test out very well. So now is the opportunity for you guys to put down below in the comments what your favorite wrench brand is and let everybody know what you've had really good success with. So guys, that wraps up all the wrenches that we're gonna be testing today. We got a lot of interesting results when it comes to looking at the hardness of a bunch of different wrenches. Here you can see we're putting up a graph that's showing the hardest HRC for all the wrenches, as well as the lowest. I did reach out to a couple of the manufacturers to understand why some of the wrenches performed so lowly, and the only really response that I got was if there is an issue, they'll go ahead and warranty out the item for me, as well as on some of the smaller wrenches, they just don't go through the heat treatment because people aren't gonna be applying the same amount of forces as they would the larger wrenches. So guys, really appreciate you all tuning in. If you're not already a subscriber, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. If you like this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. If you didn't like this video, go ahead and give it two thumbs down. And as always guys, work smarter, not harder, and I'll catch you in the next video.